Why is your most profitable customer so important? It's what we're talking about today on the eCentral Business Show. I'm joined by JD from the Institute of WOW. Thank you, John, and thank you for having me. And boy, have I been had. <laughs> <laughs> now we've had a great time off camera so far and it's actually great to actually sit down in front of the camera now to talk about this most important subject for today and that's why is your most profitable customer so important in the big scheme of things? Well when it's all said and done, what I pre and by the way just so everybody knows JD is what I get called uh, since I was about 10 but my name is John Dwyer okay but that's <laughs> okay. what if you refer, if John refers to me as JD that's what it is. Um, uh, yeah, John, look, the thing is, is that, you know, when it's all said and done, people ask me, well, what is marketing? What's it all about? And I say, well, what it should be about is identifying your most profitable customer and then just looking for more people who look like him or her. Mm. Um, and it's that simple. It's just a matter of working out where do you make most of your money from and then go looking for people who look like that, which is, in this day and age, with the likes of Facebook advertising, providing you with lookalike audiences, I mean, the world is built for that sort of marketing mentality now. Yeah, that's right. So what's an example of that then? Um, I think a good example, I'm going to show off here because I had a client um, over a 10-year period uh, who I was lucky enough to convince Jerry Seinfeld to become the spokesman for. Okay. Uh, yeah, did I just drop a name? I might just <laughs> pick that up again. But, uh, yeah, yeah, well so, done. Yeah, well it done. was one of my cures. And uh, this particular building society was called the Greater Building Society. And well before I got Seinfeld involved in their advertising, which was in the last you know, few years, um, what we did is that I was sitting in the boardroom one day and I said to the management, uh, who were nice guys, but pretty boring, uh, I just said, they were bankers, I just said to them, what's your acquisition uh, tactics for home loans? And they just said, oh, 1% honeymoon rate. I said, well, everyone's got that. Why don't we be different? So what we did is that we went and said from about a month after we had that meeting, get a home loan from the Greater Building Society and you get a free holiday. Now, my view was is that uh, that wow factor you know, of taking their eyes off the price really, really went well, mm. and uh, they tripled their home loans in the space of a few months thereafter. It went nuts. I mean, people just swapped their home loans from the banks to the building society to get a free holiday. The cost of the building society was neutral because all they did was they transferred the 1% honeymoon rate across to a cost of a free holiday. So it was not like they had to dig their hands in the pocket. They just transferred a price discount into a value add. But when we had to actually target that, we looked mm. at the most profitable customer. And guess what? The most profitable customer was going to be someone 40 plus. And do you know why? It's because they're going to borrow for their second or third home and more oh, than likely okay. borrow half a million or million dollars. Yeah. We didn't want any Gen Ys, really. Well, I didn't want any Gen Ys borrowing for home loans because they'd borrow a small amount of money. Okay, yeah, no, that makes complete sense. Now, what we find though is that when we look at people, and there's plenty of people out there from Facebook marketing package, they'll teach you how, and that sort of thing, and they talk about the hundred plus things that Facebook knows about you. Do you want people, do you think people need to drill down to that level? Absolutely. 130 points here, like you really, you know, a well qualified customer, you're going to know down to the detail of what they are in terms of 130 different odd things. I was telling uh, John off camera that uh, I run seminars around the country and provide you know opportunity for business owners to come in for the day and what we do is that we ask when they register for all of their details and their turnover which means we colour lanyard them based on their turnover when they come in. Hmm. Now that sounds evil but it allows me at a seminar to know who to talk to. Because okay. if they've got the wrong colour lanyard on, of course, which means they're a uni student, then there's a good chance I'm not going to spend as much time with them as someone who's doing five million turnover. Yeah. And it's called market segmentation. And so therefore, my view is you want to collect as much data as you possibly can about people so that you can use it for the future. And I can guarantee you, John, you can walk into any retailer in Australia today, Woolworths, Bunnings, uh, Baker's Delight, walk into any restaurant in Australia today, you can spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars and they won't ask who you are. Mm. Nuts. Do you know McDonald's will have 1.7 million people go through their restaurants in Australia today, they have no clue who they are. Mm. You come to my website, sorry, you come to my, um, my seminars and I'll know your mother's maiden name and your blood group. Yeah, no, that's it. And, so, and I guess within that sort of model, like this, when you segment your market, like there's going to be some really, really high, uh, highly qualified factors, there's some things that really correlate with your target customer as opposed to things that are probably a little bit less important. Like. Well, in fact, I'm going to name drop the Seinfeld thing again because people say to me, why did you get Jerry Seinfeld to do the advertising for the Greater Building Society for home loans? And I said, well, because we were looking for people over 40 to take home loans, and of course Seinfeld was the perfect endorser for the over 40 audience. If we were looking for Gen Ys to take out home loans, I would have got maybe Guy Sebastian, okay? So it's all about message to market match. And the thing that amazes me when I see ads on the side of buses and the backs of taxis, like who has ever bought anything off the side of a bus or a taxi? But nonetheless, when you see people peeing it up against the wall doing that, I sometimes see the advertisement and think that is not going down the right path in terms of message to market match. They will have a pop star 
promoting a retirement village. I'm exaggerating. Yeah, you know, okay, yeah. It's, it's got a like, message to market match. Yeah, that's right. And I know within what I've done within East Central, and I was talking about it off camera, it's a really nice, neat thing where I've identified the very best customer I can deal with. And I don't necessarily care what football team he plays mm. for, mm. but the fact that I do know that they're a residential service company with a team of, of 5 to 20 staff. But yep. you're inviting me to drill down even further than that and as, really get to know... As much as possible before your head disappears, you know, what I'm going to say. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you've got to be realistic about it. But I gave John off camera an example of an aluminium fence contractor in Gosford. And I think you enjoyed this one. Um, yes. Do you mind if I... Just no, go for, it, go for and, it. And uh, this particular guy had been putting out letterbox brochures in older areas in Gosford, New South Wales because they've got the old poet paling fences which might be falling down. He's trying to convince them to do an aluminium fence. And I said, oh look, you know, how's, what's the success rate? He said, nothing. So we ran a Facebook campaign. I put together a Facebook campaign titled The Ugliest Back Fence in Australia Contest. And we zeroed geographically into older areas on the central coast of New South Wales that would have had a paling fence that was perhaps 40 years old and falling down. Mm. Do you know that once he ran that Facebook campaign, which invited people to take a photo of their ugly falling down back fence and post it to a web page, he had two years worth of leads within three days. And they were all qualified leads okay. because they put up a photo of a fence falling down. A pretty good lead for an aluminium fence manufacturer. OK, right. Oh, and what he was manufacturing in Gosford, you said, but, but yeah. supplying nationally? Or? Well, yeah. Or he wasn't, he wasn't, no, he wasn't supplying nationally. He was actually just a small, you know, sort of family business. <laughs> okay, and, uh, so but, he, but he did it, he went Australia wide with that, was inundated obviously with... No, no, he didn't. No, no, what I'm saying, if he went Australia wide, if he could actually manufacture enough fences and go Australia wide, the guy would buy Tasmania, I'm sure, you know. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is that just as... But well, why would you? Why would you? You got anybody on Tasmania here? I think they've, I think they've just switched off. But the, the idea was, is think, imagine what it would be if it was a national company, because we zeroed in on his most profitable target audience, which were older homes that had a 30 or 40 year old back fence that was falling over. We just said, take a picture of your ugly falling down back fence, sent or post it up to this website, and you're in the chance to win a $5,000 aluminium fence makeover, which of course cost him a thousand. Mm. So for a thousand dollars prize that he puts up, he ends up with two years worth of leads in three days. We had to switch it off. We only spent a few hundred dollars on Facebook, and we had to switch it off. He's booked up for two years, one ad. Fabulous. That's direct response marketing yep. versus building your brand on the side of a bus. Yeah, okay. And a bit bit of in-depth there on finding the profitable customers. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. that, in fact, need a fence. Yes, exactly. They need a fence because they've just actually taken a photo of the ugly fence. Can you imagine if you said that to husbands and wives, you know, the ugliest husband or the ugliest wife, and you'd be pretty good for one of those dating agencies, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's where we, it gets pretty silly at this point. Yeah, time. I know. And we're getting off topic, and we're out of time. John had, or JD, how do people find you? Mate, uh, very easy. My website is called theinstituteofwow.com. Uh, so, therefore, if you'd like to just sort of go there, then I'd be uh, more than happy to, uh, to help you. You'll see there that there's all sorts of things that you can pinch, by the way. There's a swipe file there. You just take ideas, and you never have to talk to me even. But it's theinstituteofwow.com. Okay, fabulous. Stick around and answer some more questions for us. Oh, I'm happy to, mate. No, I'm having a ball. Okay, that's enough done for this episode of the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor. Thank you very much for watching another episode of the East Central Business Show. What we're doing on the East Central Business Show is we're bringing you business leaders and the best of the knowledge. We want to bring them on the show and release that content so that that's something that we can share with you by this easy to consume format. So you can follow us across LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Google+, or just regularly visit the eCentral.com.au slash show website, pick out the best things for you, and educate yourself on that premise. Now there's video content there for you, so you can just watch the video and, and, and inform yourself in your own time. We've also now podcasting that content as well, so it's really simple to consume. You can listen to it on the way to work in the car or during your daily exercise regime. Beyond that, we're also looking to connect with business experts. So if you consider yourself to be a, an expert in your field, please make contact so we can schedule you in and have you come on the show. And so you can release your content and increase your brand across our format. Uh, beyond that, we also invite people to send us their email address so we can send you our monthly magazine. And that's just the best of the content, the best of the videos for the month. Put out an, uh, once again in an email, arrives in your inbox, so you can just go through and pick out the things that are really going to educate you and get, advance you in your field of expertise and in business. We're a business-focused show. So thank you very much once again for watching, and we'll see you next time.